Hello, Guardians. It is Ebontis. It is October 17th. Um, tomorrow, we are going to get a trailer for Festival of the Lost. The only thing we know about it as of right now is what you can see on screen, and that is the armor. That's going to be the ornaments available for sale. So instead of doing monsters, this time they're doing... It was a vote, and we're getting kind of like the Gundam robot armor. I'm biased as a Titan because I do think this one looks good. If you don't love the Warlock one, I kind of get it. Hunters, I'm sure that's probably like 50-50. I'm not entirely sure, but Hunters or Warlocks... I could understand Titans. I feel like we actually got a good one here. That being said, tomorrow's also potentially going to bring a bit of change. Now, some of this stuff is going to be some small tweaks. Some of it's going to be sandbox stuff, so it could be a little nuanced numbers. But I want to go through some of the changes basically to let you, you know, kind of noodle over some of your loadout, some of your weapons of choice, and look over them and say, hey, this is something I tend to use. Am I going to get benefit? Am I going to see change? So... If you can think about the stuff I'm going through and think about what you typically use, maybe you'll see some benefits. Maybe you'll have to tweak your loadouts. We'll just have to see. But we've got some changes coming tomorrow, so let's go through them. Now, I don't think this is specifically tomorrow, possibly, and I think more likely season 19, but I still want to say it now to plant the seed so when it actually does happen, you guys are aware. Multiple weapons have full auto as a benefit to them, which are exotic weapons, like Traveler's Chosen, for example. When you get the Catalyst equipped, you get Osmosis, but you also get Full Auto. Full Auto is going to turn into an accessibility feature for basically the entire game on multiple weapon types. So the fact that it's just going to be something you can turn off and turn on in the game settings doesn't feel like something that's really exotic. So they're changing them up and... Traveler's Chosen, for example, is going to get surplus. Well, you know, when you consume your stacks of light, you get melee, you get all those abilities back, and surplus will have some benefit. This one, honestly, could get really strong. So if you like Traveler's Chosen, practice up with it. When that buff drops and it switches over to surplus, going to be a strong weapon. The next one is Vigilant Swing. When you get the Catalyst, which I swear I'm like 50 kills away, I just need to get them. Uh, when you get the Catalyst, it makes Vigilant Swing full auto. Now... Basically, what it's going to switch out to is Ensemble, which substantially improves handling and reload speed when allies are nearby. And that's going to kind of pair with when a nearby ally is killed, you gain health regen. So basically, it's the idea of if you, like, Vigilance Ring is going to be the most beneficial running with nearby allies. That's kind of, it, and they're leaning into that even more with the Ensemble switch. Now, no time to explain has some stat changes coming. I'll get to those when I get through them. But they're going to take the full auto trigger system and they're going to replace that with Feeding Frenzy. Like, just in case you didn't think this gun was pretty good already, it's going to get a couple of stat tweaks. But I think it's going to be still really strong because you've got the portal. Uh, you've got solid, just a gun that feels really good with 80 range. It's going to feel good and then it's going to have Feeding Frenzy on it. So in case you're wondering, no time to explain, still going to be strong. For those of you that do have Divinity, when the nerf actually happens, it's going to go from a 30% weakening buff to a 15% weakening buff. That's it. They're leaving just about everything the same. And it's one of those that we're just going to have to see how this change plays out. But Divinity will change from 30% to 15%. See how all the dust settles on this one. I'm not too worried. It's just going to have to see how it goes. They also they they said in a previous TWAB that they're reworking 20, and that number is now updated. They're reworking 26 exotic weapons in Season 19, which obviously it's going to be a little while. But I wanted to ask you guys, because I kind of want to do a video on this as well, I wanted to ask you to say, and some of them will be bigger or small. They could say a substantial rework like Lord of Wolves, or, you know, something very small. But there are going to be 26 exotics that are going to have a tweak. So I wanted to ask all of you, let me know in the comments below what exotic or exotics, you could put a whole list in there if you want to, do you feel need a tweak, should get a tweak, good, bad, buffs, changes, this thing sucks, it needs a lot of help. Let me know, I mean, you could honestly probably go down all three of these right here, for example, but let me know in the comments below if you guys think of exotics, whether it be kinetic energy or power, that could be part of that list of 26 weapons that are getting big or small tweaks in Season 19, because that's a big list, so I want to see what you guys think, and then I may make a video from that one, kind of fleshing out what I think some of the changes are, and, you know, maybe using some of your ideas as well. So I just wanted to kind of at least throw that out there for you guys, drop those in the comments, let me know which exotics you guys think, could potentially be seeing some changes coming in Season 19. Now, the next thing I want to go over is some stat changes and some general feel about weapons, kind of go through a little bit of the methodology as to why. Um, and these are just going to be different weapon archetypes and frames and things of that nature. So auto rifles, they basically state that auto rifles are going to have an increased effect from stability 
on recoil reduction, the higher you go. So at the low end, it's probably gonna be about the same, but the higher close to 100 that you get, the recoil reduction is going to be approximately 20% stronger the higher you get in stability. So if auto rifles feel a little squirrely, but you feel like you could do something with them, and you've got some auto rifles that are stable, or you see one drop, hold onto it, because that stability could make a drastic difference. Also, precision frame auto rifles like this one are gonna have their crit damage multiplier change, so the critical damage in PvP, for example, goes up by one. Goes from 30 to 31. Now, basically what that's gonna do is gonna allow, if I can pull out a calculator here, it's going to allow 30 times six shots to be 180, 30 times 31, sorry, 31 times six shots is gonna be 186. There are certain levels of resilience, like I think it's three or four resilience, that you're actually going to be able to get a kill with criticals at low resilience. So the idea is between this and one other change I think is very similar as well. You want to probably have five or more resilience in PvP because there are certain things that are actually going to be able to kill you in one less critical shot. If they hit all criticals, it's going to be a faster TTK for sure. Bows. Right now, very talented bow users are scary. Now, the main reason is, is because if they can get a very high handling setup and they can tag you with the first with like a good critical shot, they don't need much damage to finish you off. Usually it doesn't take much at all. And what they can do is set up a very high handling, quick dexterity, quick switch, like almost literally quick draw combo. And what they'll be able to do is have that bow drawn. And as soon as they fire, if they get that critical, as when they switch to say like a hand cannon and shoot you in the kneecap, you're dead. And it's a really, really fast time to kill. So what they're doing is they're basically making the switch time longer even at the high end so at 100 handling the uh hand the basically stow duration how long it takes to put the bow away is going to be 1 to 1.333 basically repeating seconds longer at 100 and then at zero handling it's going to be basically it seems about 0.5 seconds longer so it's not gonna be a drastic change. Those people are still doing that are probably gonna still be lethal. It's just gonna probably try and bring that combined TTK of like the bow shot, the switch, bring out the hand cannon, get a shot. It's probably going to be just a little bit longer. So it's not just an insanely fast TTK. So that's what's happening there. Um, small differences between the lightweight and precision frames, but that's the gist. Handling is going to be a little bit slower and you're only gonna be able to get it down to about 0.3 seconds, even at like 100 handling if you can get there. So just keep that in mind. If you're one of the bow, you know, bow hand cannon quick switchers, it's just going to be a little bit slower and that's why. Pulse rifles, basically they're rebalancing the effect of the handling stat. So on the high end of the handling stat, so if you're up towards 100, you're actually going to have an increased effect kind of feel of about 5%. The closer to zero that you are, it's going to be about 2% slower. So the range, like the feel of handling, the range is actually going to be a bigger range depending on like the zero to 100 is going to be felt even more depending on which side of that range that you're on. So if handling is important to you with your pulse rifles, leaning into handling may be something to consider a little bit more now, or if it feels a little sluggish or fast, that's why. They also are going to adjust the damage fall off scale based on the range stat. Basically, if the range is 100, it's going to be exactly the same. But at zero range, it's going to have the damage fall off start at 15 meters instead of 16. So that's one of those things to keep in mind. If you don't lean into quite as much range on your pulse rifles, that damage fall off is going to start a little bit sooner. So you're going to be a little less effective farther away. That's basically it. Adaptive frame pulse rifles like this one. These are 390s. Uh, basically, they're changing the precision multiplier and the crit damage. Um, is going to go up by one. And this is kind of where the exact same number they mentioned. So it's a 30 to a 31. So it's the same thing. If you have 30.4, which is what it was, times six bullets, it's 182.4. That might kill a Guardian at zero resilience. But now if you go 31.4 times six shots, which is two bursts, it's 188.4. So now it says this allows a weapon to kill Guardians below tier four resilience with two bursts. So again, if this is 188, the 186 in the auto rifle, you got to be running like two or three resilience to, to get killed there. It's rare. But basically, in PvP, to set yourself up for a little bit of success, resilience should probably be about five minimum to make sure things like this don't kill you. 
There's weird outliers where you need like really high, but that's not very common. But generally you should be running five, six resilience to be safe to make sure think random things like this can't two tap you so you don't get those really fast kills on you, for example. So that's why that's important. They also mentioned that peace of mind, it's zoom is a little out of whack right now at 19. They're gonna bring that down to 18. Basically they just feel it's a little too much. Scout rifles, uh, they're going to reduce the body damage, so the body shot damage from 42 to 40. If you get five shots, you're still gonna kill basically every guardian except I think like 10 resilience. And critical damage from 73.5 to 70. Now if you get three headshots, you're still gonna kill somebody that's 210. That's more health than any guardian has. But it's the combination of the body and crit damage will probably make an average TTK a smidge lower. Basically, they just said they buffed them a little too high and they're bringing them back. So if you like high impact scout rifles, it's going to probably take a little more precision on urine to be just as effective. Sidearms are actually probably hopefully going to start competing with submachine guns a little bit more. SMGs right now, very lethal in that close to mid range because of what they can do. But they're doing things to SMGs. We'll cover those in a second. But sidearms, what they're saying is they are increasing the auto aim fall off distance by 30% for everything. And basically what that means is the auto aim, the help of the game, you know, like in your aiming, is going to be pushed out 30% farther. So basically you're going to be more effective farther away at getting those criticals and having auto aim help you. So if you like sidearms, nothing's really changing to them except they're just going to be a little more effective, a little easier use farther away than they are currently right now. That's a good thing because SMGs are also getting a change. So two things are happening to SMGs. One, generally, they are reducing the damage fall off end, the distance, the distance at which the damage dealt by the weapon in hip fire reaches its lowest point. Aiming down sights extend this a little bit, but basically they're taking that from 24 to 23. So they're bringing the basically hip fire far, far version of effectiveness in just a smidge. Also, precision frames, which if you take like Shire's Wrath, they're gonna have increased base damage from 16 to 17, and criticals also go by up by about 1.4, but they're reducing the zoom from 16 to 15 on Shire's Wrath and also Friction Fire, so it's not quite as much of an outlier anymore. Most things are gonna have about that 15 range zoom. 15 to 14 is where they want SMGs, and it's gonna be a common thing, like Callus Mini Tools 14, depending on what you're looking at. This is gonna be 14. So it's that precision frame is gonna have 15, but not 16 because zoom does help you. Lightweight frames, like take uh, Callus Mini Tool, for example, are gonna have their base damage reduced by literally like 0.15 for body shots and then critical damage by 0.3. Now that's one of those things where as you have multiple bullets add up over time, those small numbers don't sound like a lot, but that's usually the difference in, you know, another bullet having a t um, lowering your time to kill or getting that kill and needing one more bullet. So those little tweaks don't sound like much, but they're gonna have a little bit of a feeling. They're not trying to kill these weapons, they're just trying to balance everything out. So if you like your out of bounds, it's still probably gonna be good. You just might feel a bit of a change. The next thing that's changing is main ingredient, not specifically, but precision frame fusion rifles, but I'm pretty sure it's aimed directly at this one. Basically they state the intrinsic perk, which down here, this weapon's recoil pattern is predictably vertical. They say they're going to reduce the effectiveness of that by about 50%, which basically means it's going to have a wider spread on the bolts that come out of the weapon, which means it's going to be harder to get those like really far distance kills because the spread of the bolts, if you get enough of them to miss, you won't get the kill. And that's the idea. It's going to be a little less effective at range because the spread is going to be a little wider depending on your stats and loadout and everything else. Now, granted, is that something you can build into to help a little bit? Possibly, but it is gonna make the weapon a little less effective farther away, which is probably a nice way for them to balance it out without totally killing it. Glaives, uh, basically they're reducing the glaive shield damage resistance against players from 75% to 50%. So it's not gonna be quite as crazy. Uh, player damage resistance against supers is still 50%. But in case you're wondering, um, if you put up that shield in PVE, just roaming around the world, it is a 97.5% damage reduction. That's massive. So if you need a way to stay alive and you can get a feel for Glaives, which they're also working on improving hit registration in season 19, um, get a feel for Glaives. They're gonna be strong and they definitely can do a whole lot for you in PVE. PVP, maybe a little less toned down, which is probably good. So sniper rifles, they're going to uh, increase the settle time after receiving flinch. Basically, if you are aimed down sights and you get flinched off of your target, it's going to take about 60% longer for you to probably settle back in. It's the best way I can read that one. 
They are reducing the received flinch in PvE, which is wonderful, because flinch in PvE just doesn't seem great. And it's already hard enough, depending on how many enemies are coming at you. And then in theory, they're going to do something similar to linear fusion rifles in Season 19, depending on how this stuff works out. So for sniper rifles, what they're going to do is they're going to increase the settle time after receiving flinch by about 60%. So if you get flinched off of a target and then you're trying to bring and that cursor has to come back onto the target, it's going to take about 60% longer. This is probably more of a PvP change, I would imagine. So that way some you're shooting somebody with like a scout rifle that can't just shoot through the flinch and kill you. On the other side, they do say they are reducing the received flinch in PvE. Probably a good thing, hopefully. At some point, snipers get to be effective again. I just don't love them in PvE right now, but that's just me. And then if these type of changes kind of work for sniper rifles, theoretically, they might do something similar in Season 19 to Linears, which are a bane of some people's PvP existence as well. Tracer rifles basically are going to get more from the stability stat. On the low end, it's going to be about 10% more stability. And on the high end, it's going to be about 25% more stability. So whatever this like one is right here with about 81, you could probably picture about 21% more stable than it is right now. So it's just going to be a lot more effective and just a little more ease of use on trace rifles. I still don't know if they have the DPS to be where they need to be in certain situations, but they should be a little more manageable, less squirrely, much more stable going, going forward. Rocket launchers are just getting a buff across the board, and it's the blast radius is gonna be increased by 0.4 for everything. Doesn't matter which one, all of them are gonna get it, but the blast radius is just gonna go up by 0.4, and basically what they're trying to do is allow rocket launchers to have a better chance at a double kill in PvP. You get one rocket when you pick up ammo, so if you only get one shot, it's really not great. Things like grenade launchers, you can get multiple kills, linears, machine guns, all those things are gonna have potential for more kills if it's just, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Theoretically, it's hard to get a double kill. They're trying to help that without, you know, making them ridiculously powerful, so small tweaks for now. We also do have some changes coming to exotics. Jade Rabbit, for example, is going to have its aim assistance reduced by 20. So this is going to go from 80 down to 60, which will probably help in PvP because right now it's a little strong with the scout rifle buff. Aim assist for 80 is pretty high. Those magnetized headshots from like a mile away will be a little less optimal. Still probably going to hit hard, but it's just a little less easy with that aim assist going on. Lord of Wolves is getting a big rework. Now in PvP, it may not be quite as fun, but in PvE... I'm telling you, this thing might be potent. So they're reducing the aim down sight's accuracy penalty from 10 times to three times, which that seems like it was ridiculously bad, which if it's going down that much could be good. They're removing the 25% universal damage buff. So it's not 25% damage stronger than it was. Apparently that was a buff that happened in the past, but they are adding a 40% additional PVE damage buff. So less strong in PVP, stronger than it was stronger than it is right now in pve uh they removed 50 percent critical damage multiplier penalty so your crits are actually still going to hit pretty hard and they're going to add full auto as an intrinsic perk this thing could be really strong in pve so if you got solar shotguns anything in that realm for champions coming next season or whenever this thing hits and again some of these changes may be coming with the patch for festival some of these may be season 19 so forgive me if i get these dates out of order but these are changes that are upcoming if i get the dates wrong forgive me uh but yeah this thing could be very strong when it hits this thing will be something to consider testing out seeing how it feels messing with again because that's a pretty substantial buff no time to explain is going to have the recoil direction from 90 which is like mostly vertical but like slightly leaning left down to like 60, 73, which is still going to be slightly left, but it's just going to have a wider spread where those bullets can go. Basically, the recoil is going to be a little broader. It's still leaning left, I think, if I remember right. And aim assist is also going to go down four. It's going to be strong when this thing switches over to full auto. Don't get me wrong. It's still going to be a good weapon, but it's just going to be a little less forgiving, a little less aim assist, a little less recoil, like tightness, just a little harder to hit those shots because it is very strong. Right, Like in trials, this thing is... Damn near number one every time, even though Forerunner may be jumping up there soon. This is still a very strong weapon. They're trying to bring it back in again without killing it. Risk Runner. This is actually going to not do too much different in PvE. Basically, they just said reduce the damage resistance versus players when your arc superconductor is active, but from 15% or from 50, 5 0 to 15%. Basically, with arc 3.0, people are like, hey, if I get hit by arc, I get 50% less damage. So theoretically, this could keep you alive through grenades or things that you probably shouldn't be able to. Now the damage resistance, you still get some benefit, but in PvP, 50% is too much. It's down to 15, 1, 5. So not quite as much of a big giant shield in PvP as it was. 
Now, they mentioned some changes coming next season, maybe not necessarily at launch, but they're working on them. Uh, basically, for special ammo linear fusion rifles, Arbalist and Lawrence Driver, which people hate facing in PvP, I hear. I don't have too much of a stipulation on them, but as long as they don't kill these weapons in PvE, balancing these things is probably required from what I hear in PvP. Uh, they're going to work on the auto aim reduction. So that's just kind of like the helping of the game. And then also flinch tuning. And again, if you can shoot something like this through flinch, that's probably not great. If somebody's hitting you twice with a scout rifle while you charge it up, you probably should miss. So that's kind of what I think they're working on. The other thing they're going to be doing is they're looking at making machine guns just better. Now, some of you guys may say like, so there are some amazing machine guns and they're basically almost always exotics that people mention. Xenophage, Thunderlord, Air Apparent. All of those are generally strong. Like the catalyst for Thunderlord is amazing. Xenophage is still very good at what it does. Just solid shots when you actually need that one big shot. And then Air Apparent has a shield and 200 bullets. Like they're unique. But unfortunately, when it comes to normal machine guns, they don't have quite the power that many other things do. So they're working on making them a better heavy option in PvP. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that means. I don't know if it's more reserves on the heavy pick, more pickup like ammo that you get. So you get a chance at more kills because you have to get multiple bullets off. It's not just like a one time shot. Uh, I don't know if they're going to help PvP damagers. I don't honestly know what they're going to do here. I'm very curious to see. But I would say even more important to me they're going to reduce the difference between heavy machine guns and other heavy weapons in PvE. Right now, linear fusion rifles are fantastic. Rocket launchers explode and do chunks of damage. Typically don't have a lot of these, like, you know, Hothead can have some Dodgers DPS, but generally these aren't great, so these probably need some love too. Grenade launchers, you get a lot of rounds, so depending on what you're doing with them, they can have some potential. Swords, you have so much ammo, if you can get close, you're just going to wreck everything. Machine guns, while good at clearing ads, if you try and just like do DPS on any raid boss, for example, you are useless. With a normal machine gun like this, anything listed here, they are not good. So they're going to try and make those better. Not probably quite as strong, but it's weird. They also mentioned they want to make them less punishing to use for ad clearing. And I think that's probably going towards more the bosses and majors and champions and stuff because... Killing red bars with a machine gun, generally not that difficult, especially if it's like a high impact one, even a fast fire one, you can kill things. But again, your PVE damage against like majors, maybe that's where they feel it sucks or even like mini bosses. So that may be something where they bump up the PVE damage. So, you know, because right now you pull out a linear fusion rifle, you just like smoke whatever you're looking at pretty much. And then a machine gun is going to take you half a clip to take down an orange bar. And that doesn't feel great. So that's probably what they're working on. But again, that's probably one of those things that may not happen at the launch of Season 19, but stuff to look forward. If you're a Machine Gun fan like me, hopefully it's positive news for you. But that's about all I got. I just wanted to let you guys know stuff to look forward to, whether it's the patch tomorrow, whether it's going to be Season 19 changes. These are some upcoming weapon changes that are going to switch up the sandbox. And some of these look really fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, drop a like below. I uh, probably will be streaming at Reset tomorrow for Festival of the Lost, so come find me on twitch.tv slash Ubontis. You can also find me over on Twitter at Ubontis. Uh, but if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. Nice way to support me. Nice way to get my videos from me to you. And if you are a YouTube member or a Patreon sub, you guys are amazing. Thank you for the extra support. But y'all, you are all fantastic. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.